by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine, by the grace of Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya ibu al-Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiya Allah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah My dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome back to our morning program. It goes by the name of Rise and Shine. Yes, we have another very cold day, my dear viewers of Madani Shalom. So we can, inshallah, listen to the beautiful verses. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم سبحان الله عما يشركون والله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam My dear viewers of Madan Shalom, alhamdulillahi azza jal You are watching Rise and Shine each and every single day we have a new topic today What we shall be speaking about is conversing, meeting each other inshallah azza jal Firstly you meet each other my dear viewers upon meeting each other What are the etiquettes? And then was conversing the etiquettes of conversing, my dear viewers. And yes, these days we are speaking about etiquettes because it is extremely important for us to know the etiquettes of various things. Alhamdulillah, being Muslims, my dear viewers, we are very fortunate that we are taught the etiquettes. You know, there are, in, if you take a look at many books, my dear viewers of the angel, there are entire books written on etiquettes and adab. Adab is known, etiquettes. So, and in fact, another reason why I did choose this topic, my dear viewers, is 
the state of what things which happen nowadays. So this is what actually, you know, brings these such things to my mind, experience my day viewers. Whatever little experience I have, if I, if I was to see somebody or see, you know, some people doing something, so I would think to myself, and I would, you know, try to analyze first or look or think about things. And then I would think to myself, this is really something to touch upon. This is really something which is a problem. And it, inshallah, I shall speak about this. And this is, you know, where we get many of our topics from Adi of inshallah. Because it's a huge problem. Yes, it is a huge problem, Adi viewers. The way we meet giving salam. So these are things I shall be speaking about. Shaking hands, my dear viewers of Madani channel. And then whilst talking, how we should converse, how we should speak, how we should talk to one another. This is the topic we shall be speaking about today. Please do join us, inshallah, stick with us. Let's listen to the Naad Sharif and then we will move to our topic. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam Salli ala nabiyyina Salli ala muhammadin Salli ala shafi موت 
एक बार सर कर मुझसे कहे अब तेरा जीना मरना मदीन में है मेरे आका का रोजा मदीन में है और जब नजर सुए इसलिए मैं बोनीर अब रहूंगा किस लिए मेरा सारा आसा दीन में है मेरे आका का रोजा मदीन में है الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وسلم ديو زمدني ان شاء الله ميرا اكا كا روزا مدينه ميه دي بليسد جريت جراند شراين جريتست اوف اول ما ديو زمدني ان شاء الله شراين دي شراين اوف رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وسلم is in al madina al marwa now today inshallah azza wa jal we shall be inshallah azza wa jal we shall be hearing today the first hadith sharif of al madina al manawwara what do i mean by of al madina al manawwara when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had migrated from makkah al mukarramah and come to al madina al manawwara which was the first hadith sharif of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam inshallah azza wa jal for those that do stick with us Now they shall also hear about this particular hadith sharif. It is a beautiful hadith sharif, and it also beautifully relates to our topic, my dear viewers. Now, generally, we begin with a parable. Now, today, mashallah, is beautiful because today we shall be speaking a little, just to introduce our topic, inshallah, about a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he is amongst the famous of the companions, Hazrat Abu Dhar radhiyallahu taala anhu. He is a every companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is great my dear viewers every companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam should be more beloved to us than you know everything we have to all the people around us we should love them more than we love ourselves and the dust even a speck of the dust under their feet under their slipper is greater than us and all our families This is the love we should possess for each and every single companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is all the companions my dear viewers. It doesn't matter who it is, is he a companion? Is he or she a companion? Then they are greater than us, they are greater than inshallah wa azzal. Undoubtedly our parents, our family, they should be more beloved to us. Every companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now but this is one companion who even amongst those companions this companion of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam holds a status 
even above their medieval was. He's no ordinary individual, really. He's a person who he would never save food for the next day. This is how much trust he had in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, why is it that I will be speaking about this companion? Inshallah, you shall find out. It's mentioned by Hazrat Abu Dhar Ghifari who first obviously before he accepted Islam that news reached him there was a messenger that there was another person a man who was claiming to be a messenger the last and final messenger he was claiming to be a prophet and when Abu Dhar Ghifari who he heard about this then what did he do? he sends his brother he calls his brother and he says to him, Go to Makkatul Mukarrama. Go to Makkatul Mukarrama and see who this person is. Observe this person. Hear what he says and then come and tell me. So he's t he tells his brother, There's a man by the name of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam that go to Makkah, he claims to be a prophet, he claims to be the last and final messenger. Go and observe him. And listen to his speech, see what he says, and then come and tell me. His brother goes, he listens, he observes, and then he comes back and he tells his brother. And Hazrat Abu Dhar Ghifari anhu, he asks. Now Hazrat Abu Dhar Ghifari anhu was one of those who was out in search for the true religion, my David was. So he went and said, you know, what, what is it that he says? What are his words? How are his actions and you know his brother, he answers him and he tells him, he explains about the Prophet So then he himself went to Makkah al-Makarramah. These were the early days of Islam. He goes to Makkah al-Makarramah and he stays a night in the masjid. Hazrat Ali who sees him and Hazrat Ali who doesn't say anything to him. And then again, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the next night he sees him, he says that a man should know his own home. Meaning, come to my house. This is the hospitality, subhanAllah. He says, come to my house, come live with me. So that person, he joins Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he stays with Hazrat Ali, karamallahu wajhahu kareem. And then Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asks, what is the reason you have come to Makkah al -Mukarrama? And he replies, because I heard about this person, I heard about this message. And Hazrat Ali who became happy. And Hazrat Ali who began to tell him, began to teach him about the Prophet Remember, Hazrat Ali was that person who was brought up by the Messenger of Allah So Hazrat Ali who excitedly was teaching Hazrat Abu Dhar about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Abu Dhar he was happy, he wished to see the person now. He wished to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to go meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So he follows Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then he comes to the grand court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he says, Assalamu alaikum, Ya, ya Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says, May peace be upon you, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replies, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. And peace also be upon you as well as the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he views of the Shalom, something beautiful you are to learn today. Something beautiful, inshallah, you are to learn today. Are the first man to give salam, this assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Where did it start from? It began from this incident of Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari. It was he that first gave salam. The Prophet ﷺ replied to the salam and then this became famous amongst the Muslims. My dear viewers of Madani Shalom, the first person to give salam, it is known, this is what we read, that the first person to give salam was Hazrat Abu Dhar Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He has accepted Islam. Now the Prophet ﷺ advises him not to tell people at that stage. Because, you know, people may harm you. He's not in his own tribe, he's in a foreign land. 
He has no protection, no asylum, and he's accepted Islam. So then he says, the Prophet ﷺ says to him, people may harm you. He says, by Allah, I will go tell everybody. He goes and he announces that I have accepted Islam and then he's beaten. But subhanAllah, he's satisfied with his beating. Then the Prophet ﷺ tells him, now go to your people and invite them to Islam. He accepts Islam, his brother accepts Islam, his mother accepts Islam, and so many other people due to him. They become companions of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. So my dear viewers of Madhani Shalom, subhanAllah, we are already halfway through our program. The first person to give salam was Hazrat Abu Dhar Ghaffari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And in fact, just to mention, what is the first hadith shrif of Al Madinat al Munawwara, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam states, and this is known as Hadith al Salam, is narrated by Hazrat Abdullah ibn al Salam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into Al Madinat al Munawwara, Abdullah ibn al Salam, he approached him to see who is this person. He says, By Allah, this is not a magician. By Allah, this person is not a poet. And what are the words that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says? Afsha salam. The first message Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives to the people of Al-Madinat al munawwara Why am I speaking about Islam? About Salam and viewers? Because this should be our first, the beginning of our conversation. The first etiquette. That whenever you begin any conversation, whenever you meet somebody, the first thing you should do is to give Salam. Afsha Salam. Spread Salam is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Wasilul Arham. And build ties, my dear viewers of the channel, with your relatives. Don't break ties, no. Islam is all about building ties. Islam is all about love, about unity, my dear viewers. Feed people. وَصَلُّوا And also pray salah. بِالْلَيْلِ In the night. وَالنَّاسُ niyam. Whilst everybody else is sleeping. Then what does the Prophet says? وَتَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ and then you shall enter Jannah with salam, with peace. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, we have heard about the first person to give salam. Secondly, about the first Hadith Sharif of Al Madinatul Manawara. Let's move to our daily reminder, inshallah, then we shall continue with our topic. So, Allah Habib, Sallallahu Ta'ala, Allah Muhammad. صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, Alhamdulillah Azawajal, a daily reminder for all of us today. A very beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam I want to mention to you. But just before that, you know, we always strive and try our best to please our Creator, Rabbi Azawajal. This hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam that has been mentioned in Musnad Abi Ya'la. And he says that Sayyiduna Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported that the beloved and blessed Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said undoubtedly helping worried people is liked by Allah azza wa jal now all of us we try to please our creator we try to do things that will please Allah azza wa jal that will please the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and alhamdulillah, this is a sign of a good Muslim. Now, again, how can we please Allah Azza wa Jal? From this very beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we find that if we help other Muslims, we will remove their problems, we remove their worries, inshallah Azza wa Jal, that will please Allah Azza wa Jal. And another hadith uh, reported again by Hazrat Sayyiduna Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that the one who helps a grieved person person Allah writes 73 virtues for him through one virtue Allah makes his world and hereafter better the rest of the virtues cause high ranks for him now what have we done 
we've removed a difficulty from a Muslim. And what we've done is any grievance that he had, any problems that he had, what we've done is we've removed that problem. Now again, that problem should be only removed for the sake of Allah. Not that I'm going to go back to him and I'm going to remind him of the favors that I did upon him. Instead of the, the, the happiness of Allah, what we're going to achieve is we're going to get the anger of Allah. So what we need to do is anything that we do in life for other people, we, we give financially, we help them, we help them in morally or any other ways, only remember that we do it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Another very beautiful hadith of Hazrat Sayyiduna Abu Sa'id Khudri narrates this beautiful hadith. He says that once we were uh, traveling with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when a person riding on a very weak animal came and he started turning his ride left and right, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who has an extra animal ride should give it to the one who has no animal ride. And the one who has leftover food should give it to the one who has no food. Similarly, different kind of things were mentioned. At last, we realized that no one had the right to keep the leftover. Subhanallah, my dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, what a beautiful reminder by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we should try to help our communities, our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, our family members, we should try to help them. So many cases, what happens is that our own next door neighbors, you know, they're struggling with financial problems, they've got other problems, and we're looking out, out elsewhere. Maybe one of the reasons is that our neighbors, our relatives, they're not gonna praise us, so we might as well give that outside so that we can get the praise from people. Remember, if you are doing it for the people on the day of judgment, don't expect any rewards from Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you are doing it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, inshallah, the reward that you will get on the day of judgment, it will be immense. May Allah Ta'ala give me and all of us the ability to help our needy Muslim brothers and sisters. And may Allah Azza wa Jal help us and do things only for the pleasure and the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Take this daily reminder and act upon it. I make the intention, inshallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi. Wa ala alihi wa sallam, a beautiful reminder my day viewers of Madani channel. Now, Alhamdulillah, Azzurul, today we are speaking about conversation. This, we, subhanAllah, we've only begun about giving salam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked that, Ayyul Islami Khair, Ya Rasulullah, what is the best? What is the goodness, the best of Islam, my day viewers? This is what a companion asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replies that, you give salam to people, my dear viewers of the children. So just giving salam it holds so much importance. So much importance. And how do you give salam? It said that Ja'a Rajulun ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the man came and he said, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he said, Assalamu alaikum. He said, Assalamu alaikum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi salam. This is one very important thing. That the Prophet ﷺ replied to the salam. This is the first part. So the etiquette of just giving salam, that you begin a conversation by giving salam. And then what is the etiquette that firstly if a person gives salam, then you must reply to the salam. Now there are some things which are known as fards, which are obligatory actions. Some things known as waji, which are mandatory, extremely important for you to act upon them. You know, sunnahs also, which you should act upon the practices and traditions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Giving salam is sunnah, but when you hear the salam, for you to reply to the salam is wajib, my dear viewers. Replying to the salam is wajib. And remember, it is replying. Now, somebody is coming and giving you salam, then you should reply. And really, it's so beautiful. What is that person saying? He's doing dua for you. He's saying, may peace be upon you. This, this, is, this is a dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show peace upon you. And then what should your reply be? Okay. 
No, my dear viewers, we should reply to the salam. It's also necessary for us to reply to the salam. We say, wa alaykum as -salam. So this person came and then the Prophet ﷺ replied to the salam for Jalasa. Then he took a seat, he sat down. And the Prophet ﷺ then said, Ashr, 10. Meaning he shall gain 10 rewards. Then another person came and said, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Then the Prophet ﷺ replied. And then he sat down and the Prophet ﷺ said 20. Meaning for adding wa rahmatullah, he gains another 10 mercies, rewards, blessings, my dear viewers. And then another, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, meaning may peace, wa rahmatullah, and also the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the barakat, the blessings, may they be upon you. The Prophet sallallahu replied, and then he said 30, meaning this person shall be given 30 rewards, my dear viewers of Mandarin so there's reward in it. It brings about peace. It's a hadith shrif of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is very, very important. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam states, "The wulladhi nafsi biyadhi." He says that I swear by Allah subhanahu wa taala. He's swearing an oath, my dear viewers. "La tadkhulul janna hatta tuslimu." That you shall never enter jannah. You shall never enter paradise until you submit. Wala tuslimu and you shall never submit hatta until tahabu until you have love for one another. Meaning you need to have love for one another, only then will you submit, only then will you enter paradise. And then how do you have how do you build love for each other? Wa afshu salam tahabu. If you wish to gain a mutual love, then spread salam. Spread salam and this shall build love, my dear viewers of Mother Nishal. Wa iyyakum wal bughda. And the Prophet states that beware from bughda, beware from hatred, beware from animosity, from enmity, beware of such things. فَإِنَّهَا هِيَ الْحَالِقَةِ For indeed, this hatred, this is a knife. This hatred is a razor. It is sharp. What does the Prophet ﷺ mean by it is a razor? لا أقول لكم The Prophet ﷺ says, I do not say to you that, that this razor will cut your hair, no. But rather, وَلَكِنْ تَحْلِقُ الدِّينِ this is such a razor which shall shave your deen, it shall shave your religion. Meaning, it shall harm, bring harm to your religion, my dear viewers of Mother Just the importance, I don't wish to speak too much about the salam itself, but this honestly, we gain an importance of giving salam. We give salam to people we love. Why? We should give salam to every Muslim. We should give salam to every believer. My dear viewers of Madani channel, we give salam to some, to others we do not give salam. What is the reason we do not give salam? We need to question ourselves. Is there somebody we do not give salam to? Really, this is sad. The Prophet ﷺ would always be the first to give salam. Remember this. The Prophet ﷺ would always first give salam, my dear viewers of Madani channel. This is the beauty. This is one of the etiquettes of conversing that you begin by giving salam let's move to our daily hadith shrif inshallah then we shall continue with our topic sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam by the grace of allah by the grace of allah Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, who are the best of the people? Sayyidina Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the best of mankind sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said Khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa allamahu That the best amongst you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an How beautiful are these words? خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ 
And there are many, many blessings in regards to reciting, doing the tilawats of the glorious Qur'an. The Qur'an, it will be a proof for us on the Day of Judgment. The Qur'an, it will intercede for us on the Day of Judgment. For every letter that we recite of the Qur'an, ten good deeds are recorded for us. And the reciter of the glorious Qur'an, he remains in the company of the angels and constantly good reward is written down for him. The Qur'an, it cleanses our hearts and it will be the Qur'an that will lead us into paradise. And in one narration, the position in paradise will be determined by the amount of Qur'an that we have memorized in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to keep connected with the glorious Qur'an and may we spend our entire lives in teaching and in learning the glorious Qur'an. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My viewers, alhamdulillahi azza wa jal, we are speaking about conversation now Allah but time is moving so fast my dear viewers of the we must go to our next segment but before that we're speaking about the etiquettes of salam after giving salam we've only just spoken about salam for the entire topic Allahu Akbar after giving salam or even whilst giving salam if it is appropriate, then you also shake the person's hand, my dear viewers of Anshal. You shake a person's hand. And shall, shall I tell you one thing, my dear viewers, really? For those people who, yes, you know, it is fine to shake their hand in deen, my dear viewers of the channel. You are giving somebody Islam, you are shaking their hand. Then shake their hand with, with love. Use two hands. There shouldn't be anything between the hands. If for a person who is respectful, you know, the companions, with so many people, when the entire groups would come to Al Madinat Al Munawwara, they would come to Rasulullah, they would kiss his hands and his feet. A person who is, for example, your father, when you shake their hand, you, you, you kiss their hand too. This is respect. This is respect. A scholar, somebody who you respect and honor, when you shake his hand, kissing their hand, if it is good with good intentions, my dear viewers of the inshallah, if it is done with good intentions, then inshallah you shall also gain reward. So this is another etiquette. Another is actually to shake the hand. You should actually, it should be actually a handshake. And it should be done, you know, with a smile, my dear viewers. It wouldn't be much of a handshake if there was no... It, it's not the same thing and it doesn't give that... Imagine really. If you were to come to somebody and you were to, you know, this is what you were to do. And imagine you to do, you know, with a smile, you're happy, you're excited. MashaAllah, I've seen you express happiness. This is how it should be. And when you do shake the hand, nowadays the way people shake hands, SubhanAllah, you know, sometimes they just use half the hand. Allah says, as if the hand is going to get dirty, no, my dear viewers. Full hand, shake hands, and this is how you begin. This is how you should meet somebody, and this is how you should begin a conversation. And remember, there's a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are not two Muslims who yaltaqi and they meet each other, then fight the safahan, and then they also shake hands. Illa except ghufira lahuma qabla an yatafarraqa, except that their sins are forgiven before they separate from each other. My dear viewers of Mother Channel, please make this a happy of yours. Let's move to our next segment. Our next segment is Health is Wealth. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen Amma ba'id fa'a'udhu billahi minash shaytan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 
My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, you are watching Rise and Shine and segment is Health is Wealth. Alhamdulillah, today we have got Shahzad Hussain Ashrafi with us who is a doctor, consultant and serving in one of the UK based hospitals. Let's go towards him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nasab, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, alakulillah. Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you so much once again giving us your precious time. Now, so we've been talking about stroke and uh, that's definitely one of the main leading causes of death across the globe. It's a very important topic and uh, much information is needed and much awareness is required to give out to the viewers of Madani channel and Alhamdulillah we're trying our best to help and benefit the Ummah. This is one of the main intentions of this program and uh, that's why we are doing here. Uh, we were talking in last segment about the uh, post stroke you see a person's life how he lives and what lesson one a person who is healthy uh, he can gain from that so up can you shed a bit light what lessons can we learn definitely you come across many patients they come to you and you see them closely and you watch them and and definitely you can uh, explain uh, very well i think yes it is um one of the devastation, I see devastation of a life uh, when we treat the patients. Many of the time, um, people do get better, sometimes people don't get better. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where family and themselves suffer. Uh, I, I would like to share one patient uh, without naming them. Uh, he was a 23-year-old mm -hmm. uh, young man who has a, who had a life in front of him. Allah. Uh, coming with the one of the most devastated uh, strokes among stroke there is a one stroke which is uh, which causes what we call a basilar stroke so it means there is a connection between brain and the body by a spinal cord and a brain stem mm. so that is an information highway between the brain and the whole body yeah if somebody have a stroke in that area no matter how good the brain is the information does not carry away mm. into the body and the patient the what we call is locked in mm. so above the head it's all paralyzed. This work below the whole body, everything is paralyzed. Allah. So that um, disease or that stroke is the most difficult. The pity thing uh, in this type of stroke is that all senses are awake and alert mm -hmm. uh, when they are locked in. So their brain cortical function, what we call executive function, all senses. Uh, which gives them intelligence, which gives them perception of a pain, which they give them feeling, Sense. which makes us a human, yeah. they are intact. Mm -hmm. But all the other, such as autonomic, so ability to breathe, ability uh, to move our eyes, ability to speak, ability to move, everything are impaired. Mm -hmm. So the person feels as if he is caged, that's why we call it a locked-in mm -hmm. syndrome, as if somebody has been tied with the chains oh, no. uh, and prevented any uh, any ability of do anything but can think everything so this is a, a, a very sad situation and you know the reason why this young man who is 23 had a stroke oh. administration of a drugs Allah. which could have been easily prevented oh. so this young man uh, got into a habit of taking uh, illicit drugs, mm. uh, those chemicals uh, which intoxicate uh, people. And as a result, unfortunately, uh, this patient had a stroke. But yes, to respected viewers of Madani Shell, we've heard that a 23 years old young lad, he had a stroke. We normally think, when we think about stroke, we think about old people, right? And normally that's how uh, in perception comes in our mind. But we can clearly understand and consultant is saying that a 23 years old, because of taking drugs, he was admitted to hospital and he had one of the serious kinds of strokes. So, dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, when we talk about drugs, Alhamdulillah, Islam has given us clear guidelines we should avoid taking drugs and every teachings of Islam Alhamdulillah it has got a backing there is a there is a logic behind that and Alhamdulillah if we act upon the teachings of Islam then we can prevent many diseases itself 
Yes. So avoid it. And another important uh, point here, Dr. would like to mention, and I would also like to take a bit of your point of view, how important it is to have a right company because these uh, drugs, those, those students or maybe those uh, young boys or youth, they start taking drugs. Definitely they've got a bit of company, a bad company, those they're already taking drugs. And end of the day, eventually they get into this, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh Right company is very important and few of our um, uh, ulama and scholars have said that this is one of the very important elements of being pious. True. Your True. company makes you what you are. Absolutely right. And actually there is a lot of evidence behind it that uh, some people have given their interviews about uh, their life and they say we tried, uh, we were succeeded mm -hmm. in, in giving up all the bad habits and we, we repent ourselves from them. But when we went back to meet our friends, when we went back into the same environment, they have attracted us and we end up having that. And that vicious cycle continues all the time. So the few tips for the parents uh, in, in, in today's uh, a difficult environment, uh, give some time on the dinner table or, 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 or some dinner times, sit down with them, gather the information about whom they meet, mm -hmm. give them time, be compassionate with your with your children. Sure. Listen to them, even though sometimes it bores you. No matter how tired you are, um, I would like to share my experiences. When I I have a six year old, uh, and uh, when I take him uh, from the maktab during the journey from uh, from taking him from the maktab to going to the home, I talk about how was your day, how what how did you spend your day, what did you learn today. How are your friends? How did you play? Did you enjoy thing today? And he, he opens up. People might think it is six year old, but this is the way of bonding, creating a bonds with your child. Mashallah. Very important is that we should provide the right atmosphere and environment to our child. Yes, that's mm -hmm. very important. I think we should take. Uh, we should hold the finger of our child and take him to the masjid. We should take him regularly to the masjid every day if it is possible. We should show him the way that this is the right place you need to come and you need to do worship uh, rather than taking them every Friday. Yes, we do. We should do on Fridays also, but on a regular basis we should take them, we should give them time and the right atmosphere, right environment, it really matters. It does matter. Alhamdulillah, Dawat Islam is atmosphere is in front of you, Madani channel is in front of you if we try to associate ourselves with this fragrant atmosphere inshallah we should come to ijtima'at of dawat islami weekly gatherings of dawat islami if we can travel in madani qafili we can take our children with us and that will be a great a way forward to help and alhamdulillah to raise them and definitely to give them a right atmosphere and environment which could eventually avoid them going to the wrong hands and the wrong people and the wrong society and inshallah they will be protected from drugs also. May Allah wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to understand what we've said. Once again, I would like to say thank you, Dr. Sahab, for your precious time and coming and giving your time once again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu alil Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam alihi wa sallam alihi wa sallam Generally, mashallah, because the doctor is a specialist in this in stroke my dear viewers of Madani channel for this reason mashallah he has extensively taught us about strokes and then the also those things pertaining to those things which can lead to if it happens then what to do and also the aftermath mashallah many good lessons to be learned from that undoubtedly remember my dear viewers one of the possible results or the causes sorry for stroke is and could be Drugs, my dear viewers of the channel, is really it is, isn't it? Because for many people, due to drugs, this this itself leads to stroke. So please refrain from drugs. Uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant us and protect even our children and our families from such, my dear viewers of the channel. Inshallah, That's all for now. Continue to recite the Ru Sharif upon Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam By the grace of Allah
by the grace of Allah Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine By the grace of Allah